came out to, we need you more than ever, Father. But we, you know, Father, how we are in the last days, Father. How we, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, with all this wickedness going on, we need you, Father. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Father, we need you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We are calling upon your name, Lord. In the name of Jesus, because you are the Father. Oh God, hallelujah. Oh God, you are God all by yourself. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we come to honor you, Lord. We come to praise you, Lord. Oh God, we come to lay down our life for you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we say it belongs to you, Father. It doesn't belong to Buddha. It doesn't belong to Muhammad. Yes. But God, it belongs to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, all the glory. All the praise, all the worship, yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, belongs to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we just come to lift up our hands, Lord. We come to lift up our voices, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We came, in the name of Jesus. We came, oh, Lord, to open up our mouth and give you a shout out of our mouth, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, we can to jump for joy, Lord. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, do it now, God. In the name of Jesus, do it now, God. In the name of Jesus, protect the youth right now. In the name of Jesus, we are calling upon your name. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, the name that can heal, the name that can deliver, the name, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus that can redeem, the name that can save, the name, hallelujah, that keeps us protected from the evil one, in the name of Jesus, the one, hallelujah, the truth in the way, in the name of Jesus, the very God, in the name of Jesus, that's not in the grave, hallelujah, for you die. In the name of Jesus, but yet you, you came back, Lord, on the third day. In the name of Jesus, oh God, with all power, in the name of Jesus, oh God, you shed your blood for us. You got beaten for us. You got tortured for us. You got Tell him about moving, moving for us. Too much. God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we come to thank you. We come to thank you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, for what you did on the Calvary, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, for showing us the word. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh God, for putting a breath in our bodies. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, on the day. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, for what you're in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Oh God, hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. My blood will shine unto you. My blood will dance for you. In the name of Jesus, because I am not under shame. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh God, this is. This is your temple, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask for you, God. In the name of Jesus, touch every single individual that don't know you, Lord, that want to get a chance to know you, oh, Lord. I want to pray in the name of Jesus for the ones, uh, oh, God, hallelujah, that can't hear you, oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that's a Hallelujah. That want a relationship with you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I am praying for them, Lord. Lord, let's get now. Send them in the room, God. God, at least so they can learn about your word. In the name of Jesus, there is some people, Lord, that want to know about you, that don't know you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. That want to get a chance to send them to 1221 Pacific Avenue at Basic Ministries, Lord. In the name of Jesus, because they can hear a word on tonight. Even touch my pastor. I see the living this marvelous word. In the name of Jesus, I see the living this powerful word, oh Lord. Oh God, touch us right now. Touch his mind, touch his heart, touch his soul, oh God, in my chief, oh God, let it be worth it from heaven, oh God, pray for the praise team, 
exist as the church of the 21st century to help, heal, empower, lead, and prosper God's people and their community in order to bring glory to our Father, which is in heaven. Why do we exist? Amen. For we know that God is a spirit, and where does he live? Yeah. Amen. I said his spirit lives in the spirit to know that the spirit of God, that the rule of God, his breath lives on the inside. That's real good, King. Ah, That's real good, King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Do me a favor and don't greet somebody that you did not come to church with. And just give you something that God we love that lives on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I want to say to you a good job. You got a church in here. Come on. 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 Come Let's remember that the scripture they have to keep together with this week. You are right. Say that thing. So no color, right? That's because it's shirt. Yeah. Again, we are in Acts 15 to 20. We are excited about our Bible battle this week. Pastor is going against Tino. Amen. And I'm calling Tino to help him study. We got to, amen. We got to make sure you know Chief is competitive. I'm telling you, you got to be quicker than that, Tino. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody has been enjoying Pastor's series here? Yeah. Yeah. This has been a Pastor's wonderful series where we are learning about who our Father is. Amen. Amen. I believe that we, we have finally concluded the way to the wedding. Amen. And the, the, the series was just as long as the Jewish wedding is. Oh, God. But we love the Lord. That'd be good, though. <laughs> It'd be good though, amen. Have we been enjoying it though? We've been enjoying the series. Amen. So we're so excited. Please make sure, brothers and sisters, amen, that we're telling people about our church. We know our pastor Lord. We know we love him. Amen. Amen. Prayer partners, who's been praying with your prayer partner? Amen. Please, brothers and sisters, make sure that you are praying with your prayer partner. Amen. And we, how we know, we pray together, we'll grow together. Amen. Yes, so please make sure that you're praying at least once a week. Amen. Just for 30 minutes. Amen. To pray with your prayer partner. Amen. Church ministries, we're going back to the office this Sunday. Amen. Excited. It is time for Team John the Baptist to go out. Amen. So see your name on this list, brothers and sisters. Please make sure. Amen. That you are hitting the path with us. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we do not. Amen. We're afraid from you coming on both Sundays. But whatever Sunday that you signed up for, we ask that you commit to that. Amen. And then first we're passionate every Monday through Friday starting at 7 o'clock a.m. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are excited about prayer from Confident for Deacon Tonight Stars. He's doing a wonderful job. Amen. And then for first fruits. Amen. I'm excited to report that we have fed 1,034 families right here at Basic Ministry. Hey, thank God is doing work things right here in our food ministry. We keep here every Wednesday starting probably at 12 p.m. Setting up, amen, and distributing groceries at 2 o'clock. Amen. Now, y'all, amen, if you have time on your agenda on Wednesdays, please come out and support us as we're giving groceries away. And of course, if you need groceries, we got you covered in the right Amen. I'm excited about the World Changers. Amen. World Changers, we're going to be having their very first youth group 
Amen. On March 17th, this Friday, starting at 6 o'clock. You know what that is? Amen. If you're the age between 12 and 24, amen. We are expecting for you to be here this Friday. Amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, I believe that the topic that we're going to be talking about is identity. Amen. Discover who we are in Christ. Amen. So we're so excited about this. This is our very first youth group session. And now, people, please make sure that you invite somebody to come out with you. Excited to call? I'm excited to. Amen. We're going to chat that on Jesus. And game night, the very next night, we're excited about game night. Amen. And then this is being put on, amen, by the World Changers and First Groups Ministry. Amen. We are excited. Amen. That Saturday, the 18th, will be starting. And then open the doors at 5.30 p.m. It'll be so much fun, so much fun, so much fun. Uh, please 
Please make sure, brothers and sisters, if you would like to, amen, if you want to be drinking with us, amen, get your blood stained shirt today. Oh, uh, catch this trick. For Holy Week, you can rock it, amen, on my bottle and my boot box. It costs only $20. You can see Lady Mel, you yeah. know with that. Amen. Our Dare to Dream program is returning this summer. Woo! We are excited to the time of the lives amen, of young people. Amen. amen. So brothers and sisters, if you would like to partner with us, please make sure that you scan that QR code. Join the THA movement.com. Amen. And let's put our hands up in the bar our announcements. It is time for Bible Drill! Woo! Woo! We've been getting whooped the past couple of weeks. Last couple of years. Uh oh, it's right. Past right. <laughs> couple of years. Don't look at me. Oh, 
alive. Conversation in times I like past, the 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 flesh. Uh -huh. Can't turn it back. Like, That's what it says. Yeah. That's what it says. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
And he says, Amen. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Amen. Forgiveness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Against such things, there is no law. Remember, I explained that last week. Amen. That law bring, anytime you see a law, behind that law is judgment. That's the truth. And when you break that law, you'll be judged. Amen. But when we walk under the hope, when we walk under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, there is no judgment. That's why the Bible said there is no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Amen. For we are free. When the sun sets free, it's free. Amen. When we walk under the fruits of the Spirit, when we walk under the leadership of the Spirit, brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit leads Hallelujah. us away from judgment. Wow. Sin that's leads you to judgment. Oh, that's good. That's good. The sins of the world oh. led Jesus right to Mount Calvary. Are y'all listening to me? When we walk under the fruits of the Spirit, it leads us yeah. away from that's prison. Oh, that's good. It leads us away from it. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. I told you before. The, the Holy Spirit is the DNA of God. Amen. Yes, yes, I want to give you a couple of scriptures. This is, these are the prophecies of uh, the virgin birth, birth. Genesis 3 and 15. Amen. This is something you should write down. This is one of the first prophecies of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Jesus was mentioned in the book of Genesis several times. Amen. Amen. And it says, I will put an, in, an enemy between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it, he, it shall bruise thy head, thou shall bruise his heel. What is that uh, prophecy talking about? Yeah. A virgin birth? A woman with a seed. What did we know about women? They don't carry the seed. Man carries the seed. But concerning the virgin birth by Mary, she actually carried the seed. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost is the one that impregnated her. Amen. Isaiah 7 14 says, Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and ye shall and ye sh and she will call his name Emmanuel. Amen. And so these are these two prophecies I wanted to point out. Amen. Talking about a virgin birth. Amen. Because we understand that God did not birth Jesus according to man's seed, but God birthed Jesus according to his seed. Amen. His DNA, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The, 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 care, the fruits of the Holy Spirit are the characteristics. Amen. The DNA traits of our father. Amen. You all to heard me say, amen. You do things just like your daddy or just like your mother and they're organic. You don't even try to do them like, like them. Amen. It just happens when you and I are born again, brothers and sisters of the seed of God, which is what? Come on, stay with me. Amen. Which is the Holy spirit. After a while, you, you don't have to try to be loving. You'll just start being loving. You don't have to try to be kind. You'll just start being kind. You don't have to try to be good. You'll just start being good because this is the fruit of your father. Th does that make sense? When the Bible says you're going to know false prophets by their fruit, and it's not talking about their do's and don'ts. It's talking about after a while, they're not going to look like your daddy. They might they might try to act like them, but you'll start seeing. How did you preach that message and go out there and cuss that person out like that? Are, are, are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? They they won't demonstrate the fruits. Amen. Because they won't because fruit is a result of being the fruits of the Holy Ghost are being a result of being born of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But the, like I told you before, but to see fruit, you gotta wait for a minute. Don't call nobody a saint too quick and don't no call nobody a sinner too quick. Watch them for a minute. Because you, you might think that the sinner, amen, turns out the sinner might turn out to be a saint. Amen. And the saint may turn out to be a sinner. 
You don't bear fruit overnight just because they know scriptures, watch them for a minute. Uh -huh. Just because they have a voice, watch them for a minute. Are y'all listening to me? Let's see how long they can keep up this charade. Or let's see, are they being real? Uh, are y'all listening to me? Because after a while, you will be able to come up with something to say, hmm, I see fruit. Amen? Amen. Tonight we're dealing with, brothers and sisters, one of the fruits of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Which is faithfulness. I thought about that. I said, Lord, it takes something. It takes the Holy Spirit. It takes God miraculous power. Think about that. To be faithful. So it's organic to quit. It, it takes the Holy Ghost to be faithful. Now think about that. So that lets me know that quitting, giving up, throwing in the towel is actually organic. The only reason you didn't quit because God was with you. Everybody in here would have quit. The only reason you didn't quit is because God is with you. It takes the fruit of the Holy Ghost to be faithful in marriage. I don't care if they sit at the aisle and say I do. If they ain't got the Holy Ghost, they both going to be cheating on each other. Ah. Are y'all listening to me? Sinners can't be faithful. Sinners can't be faithful. That's, that's, what, that's, what, that's, what that's, that's what that's technically saying. If I need the Holy Ghost to be faithful, if I'm a sinner, I can't be faithful. How many things have you started and quit? I'm on. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. This is how my mind. I said, Lord, it takes. I need to be saved to be faithful. Yeah. Yeah. To be loyal, and that's and and, and what faithfulness means. Or faithfulness is 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 the quality of being faithful, right? Fruit of faithfulness. Amen. Faithful, faithful, adjective, remaining loyal and steadfast. You need the Holy Ghost to be steadfast. Without the Holy Ghost, you're going to quit. Amen. He keeps you. Ah. I want to give us a couple of scriptures. Uh, and we're going to start off with. God's faithfulness. If you notice, I'm always starting off a Bible study first with the Lord, then with us. Amen. Amen. Uh, somebody give me, give me Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7, then I'm going to go 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24. Somebody give me that Deuteronomy seven. We might have to. We can swing the mic around so we can we can Bible Bible drill in here. Amen. So give me somebody to help me swing this mic around. Amen. And somebody get it before the next person. Amen. You got it, babe. Deuteronomy seven. Amen. Verse nine. Deuteronomy seven nine. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, He is God. The faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for the thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandment. He said, he says, he says, I'm faithful to my covenant. Covenant means contract, word. I'm faithful to my word. God is a faithful man and he's faithful to his word. Amen. He's faithful to his word. I, I, I used to get taught, amen, that your word should be your bond. Your word is the greatest thing you have. If you say it, you should do everything you can to do it, or you should be, be quiet and don't speak. Don't say a word if you're not going to keep your word. Amen? But God is faithful to his word. Amen? God is faithful 
uh, to that word. That's why we need to know that word, amen, because that word, he says, I'll keep it. He says, I'm going to keep it for a thousand generations. Good job. I, I'm going to keep it for, for a thousand generations. A generation we know is 40 years. That's 40. <laughs> he says, I'm going to keep it. I'm go I, I promise you. Good God Almighty. We know his word, the Bible says us, uh, will, will last forever. His word will out remain everything because he's faithful to what he said. Amen. You can't trust somebody that's not faithful to their word. You can't trust them. Are y'all listening to me? Because they don't take their word as, as gold. Your word is the most valuable thing you really have. Your word, if people know your word is bond, people will give you something based off just what you said. I'm going to give you the money by next week, but let me get it now. Go ahead. I know oh, he good. She good. Are y'all listening to me? Give me this scripture. Amen. Give me somebody. Give me Malachi three and six. And then that verse was. OK, give me Malachi three and six. Though. I'm sorry. Give me Malachi three. My mind went somewhere. I want to. I want to. Faithful to his word. That's why you got to know it. Mal Malachi three and six. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Amen. He says, I'm the Lord, and I change not. I don't change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Have you ever been around somebody and they was acting one way, and then when you got around more people, they changed yeah. on you? Because yeah. they were trying to show off for who they were in front of? God says, I don't change. I don't change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Whatever I said, that's what it is. Who I am, that's who I am. He doesn't change. I love people that you can be around. I, whether they're, whether they're, whether they're, some people are crazy, but I like them because they've been crazy forever. <laughs> they're not putting on. They're not, they're not going to change. You, you take them before politicians, they crazy. You take them before these type of things, that's just who. So you start to say, you know what? That's just who they are. We want to develop a character like God. What people say about us, that's just who they are. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? Oh, everywhere they go, they're going to pray with you. That's just who they are. Everywhere they go, they're going to witness to you. That's just who they are. Are y'all listening to me? They always got a smile on their face. They always got kind words to say. They always, amen, got hope and faith. That's, that's how our character needs to be as God's people. They always going to try to do the right thing. Amen? Because why? That is who they are. That's not what they're trying to do. See, that's the difference between the real and the fake. The fake are doing it, but that ain't who they is. The real is doing it because that's just who they are. Uh, good God Almighty. God doesn't change. Amen. Give me that first Thessalonians 5.24. That, that's, that's one of my goals, just to be who I am. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 5.24. Amen. Am I getting it? We can, uh, I got it. All right. Here we got go. It. Got that mic hot. Amen. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. I like that scripture. It just says, he who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. He will do it. Whatever God spoke over your life, guess what? He's going to do it. Good God Almighty. Are, are y'all, did y'all hear that? He will do it. I don't know what you have heard from God, but he wants you to know if I said it, if I promised it, if you heard me say this to you, I will do it. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. I will do it.
do it. I swear I'm going to bless you. That's what he told Abraham. I'm going to do it. My, my word is on the line. I will not tell you something and not fulfill what I said. I will do it. This lets us know, brothers and sisters, you don't have to do it. When God gives you a promise, he doesn't give you a prophecy for you to run out and try to fulfill your own prophecy. I'm going to say that again. When God gives you a prophecy, when somebody prophesies over your life through the Holy Spirit, it's not for you to go do your own prophecy. I'm just telling you what I'm about to do. I'm just giving you insight of what I'm going to do for your life. I'm not asking for you to do it. When, when God prophesies, he's not asking for you to do it. He's making you informed of what he is going to do. So when he prophesies on you, now you just have to be still and see the salvation of the Lord. And just wait on it. Good God Almighty. On the Lord. So it's not, it's not to go out. It's not to do all that. No, no, no. Just wait. He said it. And he's not alive. Amen. Give me 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. He's going to do it. Anybody got a prophecy from the Lord? Well, I'm going to tell you one thing you should do if you got a prophecy from the Lord. Refuse to die until you see it. Tell yourself, I'm not going in the ground. I will try to see my, that prophecy fulfilled in my life. You, you have that authority based off the word of God. Not, not your own strength. Lord, you said you're going to do this. I don't care if I'm 100 years old. I ain't going nowhere until I see it. Yeah. Uh, that, that was Caleb. Caleb said, Caleb said, I'm going to get my mountain. Yeah. He said, well, Caleb, you grew old waiting on this. Because yeah, yeah. when Caleb got the prophecy, he was 40. He didn't get the mount till he was 80 years old. 80, right, right. He waited 40 plus years. But you know what Caleb said? I'm still strong, you know. That's good. Good guy. He said, they said, they said, you're gonna have to fight to get that mount. You do know that. He said, My strength hasn't left. I'm 80 years old, but I'm as strong as a 40-year-old man. Right. Why did God keep his strength? Why did God keep him alive? Because God promised him. Promised. Amen. That's good. And God ain't going to be made out of liar. Amen. So I can't let you die if I didn't give you what I said I was going to give you. Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. So, so you grew a, you grew old in age, but I'm not growing old in strength. Good That's God good. Almighty. That's good. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you can get old in age, but you ain't got to get old in your strength. That's good. Amen? Not until you see what God said. That's right. You ready? What would I tell you again? Second Thessalonians. Go ahead. But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. I, I establish another word for establish. It's strengthen you. The Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and he will and protect you from the evil one. God is not going to let the enemy overtake you. I'm going to say that again. That was uh, 3 and 3. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3. God is not going to let the enemy. You do not have to worry about the devil. Because God is faithful to you. So if anything is going to attack you, he's going to attack it. Does, does that make sense? God is not going to let the devil overtake you. Stop talking about the devil. It's not going to happen. Uh, 
it's not going to happen. Amen. It's not going to happen unless you start putting your faith in that it's going to happen. And once you put your faith in that it's going to happen, you're showing a sign that you don't trust God and you wonder why it's happening because you're doing that to you. God said no, but you keep saying yes. Uh, does that make sense? He said, no, I'll strengthen you when that devil comes. Good God, I'm mad. I'll strengthen you and I will, I will strengthen you, but protect you. Now, you would think I need to be strong to protect myself. Uh, he didn't say, I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to strengthen you so you can go fight. He says, I'm going to strengthen you, but I'm going to fight for you. Ah. Uh, so you're going to walk out strong when the devil come and didn't even have to lift a hand. That's good. That's good. Let's go to this one. Give me 1 John 1 and 9. And we're going to move on to us. 1 John 1 and 9. God is faithful. God is a faithful person. God is faithful. Remember, we've been talking about marriage. We just finished that long about that. <laughs> about marriage. Yeah. The key thing to marriage is faithfulness. But you need the Holy Ghost to be faithful. Right. God is faithful to us. We are the ones not faithful to him. Yeah. That's why he showed us uh, 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 Hosea, Hosea and Gomer. To show us Hosea was faithful. It wasn't Hosea, it was Gomer. Amen. That's why we need to be born again so we can get his characteristics of being faithful. And okay, let me keep going. Read that for me. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, now, this is a little different. This is concerning your sin. He says, a, a part of our healing, now he'll forgive us. But a part of us for being forgiven is confession. You cannot be forgiven lack of confession. You got to own your sin. You got to own it so you can see his faithfulness. I like that. He's faithful. He already knows you're going to sin, so he already gets that. You're, you're born to sin, shape the nigga. But he wants to know, will you acknowledge it? For it? Are you humble enough to tell your brother or your sister? Are y'all listening to me? Are you humble enough? He says, if you're humble enough to tell your brother, your sister, your sin, he said, I'll forgive you from it. Good God. But, it, but you have to confess it. My pastor used to tell me this, and I tell you guys that. Always keep your sins before God. You cannot approach the throne of God as though you are perfect. God will reject you. He's the only perfect one. So when you approach this mighty king, you have to disrobe yourself and be who you are. and Because he, he's not going to accept somebody that's being fake. He only is going to accept the real, whether really good or really bad. I don't, I, that's all right. I just need you to be real. Because you can't, oh, good God Almighty. You can't disciple people that ain't being real. Only way you can disciple somebody is when they're actually being real and they're not putting on, then you know what you're working with. But, but you, but you got to be real. Lord, help me. Good God of mine. Lord, forgive me. He, he just, he, that's all he wants. Amen? God is faithful. Amen. Now let's talk about us. Amen? Give me Psalms 37, 21, 28. Let's talk about us a little bit.
Psalms 37, 28. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. This translation said, for the Lord is just and will not forsake his faithful. If you are faithful to God, God will not forsake you. Are y'all listening to me? He says he will not forsake his faithful ones. Normally, you don't forsake people that's faithful to you. Are y'all listening to me? If you know people that's faithful to you, you should be faithful to them. Right? He says, I will not forsake my faithful ones. We want to become faithful faithful ones you have to be faithful are y'all listening to me steadfast amen give me proverbs 3 3 and 4 proverbs 3 3 and 4 Mm -hmm. Somebody got it? Come on. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God. I, I like how he said how God, even that translation, put faithfulness with truth. Mine says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Right? Bind them around your neck. Wear them like a gold chain. Write them on the tables of your heart. Then you will win. Now, but this is good. This is what faithfulness helps you win. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. One thing God is looking for is just somebody that's going to be faithful. He gives his favor to people that are faithful. One of the requirements of getting God's favor is God. See, God already knows your heart. God already knows when that test comes, how you're going to act. He knows your heart. He knows, are you going to remain down? Are you going to leave? Right? And so sometimes he doesn't give it to you because he already knows you're going to leave anyway. Uh, are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? He can't give you his favor because he already knows you're not going to be steadfast anyway. Because you can have the favor of God on your life in a bad situation. See, favors transcend situations. Joseph was in prison, but Joseph still had God's favor on him. He had his favor on him so much that even when he was lied on and put in prison, bad situation, the guard of the prison still made him the head captain. Ah. He was in prison, but he still was the man. Because God could trust him. You can't trust people that won't be there. So you get favor. But then it switches. It says not just favor with God. You get favor with man, too. It switches. You get favor with man. You, this is how you get a good name. This is how you get favor with man. In other words, you know, one thing we said about business, whatever you can do for 10 years straight, faithfulness will begin to pay you. See, people are watching you. They're watching you. And they watch how you switch so much. They watch how you start this ministry for two weeks, and then you're done. And then you start this, but then you're done. They watch that. What makes men have favor, they're going to say, shoot, no, I don't know what y'all saying. He been doing that for 15, 20 years. I'm watching it. That's that's what that's that's what that's what makes man trust you. Even man. Th that makes it that's what gives you a good name. Is that they're gonna say, shoot, they've been doing that for a long time. I don't know about all that, but I know women. I've said it about people. That's what gives you a good name, right? There is no such thing as an overnight success. That don't even really exist. You just found out about them when you found out about them. But nine times a ten, the people that just all of a sudden see what they just blew up out of nowhere. No, they wasn't. They were being faithful when you didn't see them. 
and then God put them in your face. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? But it's faithfulness that gives you favor. It's faithfulness that gives you a good name. Amen? It's because people can trust you. It's called a track record. Another word for it is called a track record. Yeah. Your, your history, your resume. In business, watch out for a person when you look at their resume and they got 20 jobs on one resume. Watch out for that. You think that look good to an owner that don't look good. You know what that shows? A lack of consistency. You bounce. It's inconsistency. Excuse me, a lack of inconsistency. Job owners or bosses like to see you've been on that job for 20 years. They like to see that type of stuff. He was on this for 30 years. He was on this. They don't like to see. He was on it for three months? Hey, okay. He was on that for... Because it, it shows a lack of cunning, and it shows you that you're inconsistent. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? That's what it shows. You might think that I put all these jobs on my resume. Don't do that. Bosses don't even like it. You better, you better put your length longer. <laughs> oh, forgive me. I, I can't tell them that, Lord. Yeah, I can't tell them that. Forgive me, y'all. Edit that. But I'm, but I'm just telling you, really, this is how we, this is how they look at it. I know people think that that's a good thing, but that's not. All right. Okay. Now we're going to talk about more. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it a little bit deeper. Now this is the place where we need to be faithful at. Give me Second Thessalonians three and five. Second. Thessalonians 3 and 5. Give me that. Yes, sir. The Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Amen. Our mind says steadfastness, right? One place you have to be steadfast or faithful is, is in your heart. It's in your heart. Right? Don't fall in love and out of love so quick. Oh. You got to be faithful in your heart. Right? Sometimes I, I, I see people and, they, and they'll be doing a whole lot of stuff, but their heart really ain't. Like, your heart has to be in God, right? Not just your works, your heart. Not just your money, your heart. God says, the Bible says, love God with all your heart. You can't move in here. If you love me, will you always love me? Your heart is what you're passionate about. This is where your passion comes from, the passion of Christ. He loved God, so loved you. Right? You you can't be passionate about them and passionate about them and passionate about that and passionate. You can't do that. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Where's your heart at with God? How much do you love him? Right? But what if he don't bless you? Do you still love him? What if God said, your destiny is, I'm going to put you in a tent. For your life. Will you still love him? Will you still love him? Or, or do I have to do what you want me to do for, do I got to uh, please you? For you to love me. I got to do what you want. That's manipulation. Are, are that's manipulation. If I don't do what you want me to do, you know, that's why office y'all heard me say this. Every once in a while, tell people that say they love you, tell them no and see. Oh, they all say you love you, keep giving what they want. If you really, the person, no, listen to me, the person that say they love you, deny them. And see, do they really love you? Because if you really, let they really love you over the denial, they still going to love you. Good God of mine. Like when you whoop your child, and after you whoop your child, that baby goes, oh, mama, I love you. Because they really love you, even though you just made them cry. And, uh, tell them no. Let's see, you really love me? God, God says if he can't tell you no, he says you're not my child, you're a bastard. That's what the Bible says. 
can say it like that. If I if I can't tell you no, you ain't you really ain't mine. Uh, you're not born to me. You don't really love me. Amen. Why well, y'all quiet? <laughs> just 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 all right, all right. Just 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 little stuff like that. Just see, just take a test. Just do do, test, do a love test one time in your life and see. Amen. So we need to be faithful in our hearts. This is another place we need to be faithful at. Give me uh, Isaiah 26 and 3. Isaiah 26 and 3. You really love me, huh? No, you can't go. <laughs> Did that hit your son? <laughs> 26 and 3. Uh -huh. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in him. Amen. Steadfast. Stay. Another place you have to be faithful at is in your head. In your head. You got to be faithful in your mind. How, how, how many thoughts do you got running through your head? You got to make your mind up so you can commit to one of them. I, have you ever heard of, have you ever seen a person that one day, I used to have friends, that one day they tell you, I want to be a fireman. And then the next week they tell you, I want to be a construction owner. And then the next week they tell you, that's a, that's coming from their head. Like you 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 can't be all of that. Pick one. So you and serve it good. But that's almost a spirit of anxiety. Are, are y'all listening to me? It's too much in you. You know, you're all you every. And you see about you just everywhere. Yeah, and you can't be everywhere and do stuff with excellence. You can't do it. You're stretched too thin. If you're going to do something good, you have to find something you're going to do and do it good. And if you do it good enough, it will bless you as you did 10 things. Sometimes the problem with being a jack of all trades is that you don't master none of them. Are y'all listening to me? You can't do every. So, so if you have several things you want to do, now you have to timeline them, right? And figure it out on how you're going to do all these things. But you only can do it one at a time. I don't care how many cars you got. You only can drive one at a time. Can't drive two or three cars at one time. Can't do it. I don't care how many bedrooms you have. You only can live in one bed at a time. So you have to find things. And, you, and this is how you order, structure your life. You should not have papers everywhere in your house. I was, I was telling the brother the other day, no, you got to organize your life. You got to You got all these notebooks, but if I ask you, what's in that notebook? It's, it's everything. That's, that's a mess. It looks good, but that ain't, that's no good. That's showing me how you're thinking. Your thinking is a mess. Your clothes everywhere. This is everywhere. No, you got that means you're, you're not organizing your thoughts. Leaders think strategic. Like I think strategic in, in my head. Like it, I, I, not, you got to be careful because you got to still move by faith. But it, I got to be this. You got to make sense in my head. That's so what we gonna do. I'm not okay. One step, two step, three. So you gotta, it gotta logic. be organized logic. Now, how are we gonna get to step team? It sounds good, but give me some order, right? And that's you gotta have order your thoughts. Are y'all listening to me? Have have your notebooks and and write on the notebook scriptures, business. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can get to it quickly. Color code them. You, you have to think like that. Or, or, you won't, or you will not move to success because your thoughts are not successful. What gets you successful is structure. Organization. That's what made that's you literally put yourself on a pathway of success and you go step by step by step by step. Amen. Those that trust in the Lord, he orders your steps. 
step by step by step, precept upon precept, glory to glory. That's structure. I move you from glory to glory. That's structure. Steps, structure. You have to be very structured. What time do you wake up? Do you wake up like that every day? You're not going to meet the... Ah, oh, good God. See, I knew... One reason I, I told you, I started First Fruits because I was trying to bring more order in my life because I understood if I'm going to go higher, I got to have more order. I can't just say I'm going to pray. Pray when? When do you pray? When you feel like it? Ah, that's not business. Oh, that's not powerful. Good God of my, are y'all listening to me? That's not powerful. You can't do important people like that. You can't tell somebody important, I'm going to meet with you when I, no, you can't do that when I feel like it. You got to, you have to have a standing appointment. God is important. Get a standing appointment with the Lord. Tell the Lord every time at this time, I'm coming to holler at you. And I bet you he shows up every time. No, Lord, every time I, I realize you are important and I respect your time. So I, every time, Lord, at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, six, whatever time, I'm coming to holler at you. That's success. That's steadfast. It's consistent. I, I tell people, you, you want to do all that, but can you keep your phone number? For 10 years? Ah. Now, can you just keep the same number? Why, why do I say that? Because I model, I see how some of my elders done did it. And this is the type of stuff they did. And y'all listening to me. How are you going to, the Bible says if you're going to take a, a, a city, you got to first be able to control your tongue. You, if you can't control your tongue, you can't take no city. Because it's the little things. It's the little things. Now, the big things didn't make the little things. The little things made the big things. I challenge everybody to get up the same time every day. Oh, I got you. <laughs> This morning, I did not want to get up. That's why she said that. I told myself, I'm going to call in. I'm tired. I don't feel like it. And I was, I kept, as I kept talking to myself, then I thought about it. You got to wake it up, man. You got stuff to do. You got places to go. You got to get up. But I said, you know what? All right, here I go. And I was, I was walking to the shower. I said, this is a dope thing, man. <laughs> Because of, because of those, you got to get up whether you feel like it or not. No, I said, this adult thing. I'm tired of being this adult. See, a kid can lay in the bed all day. I can't lay in the bed all day. I'm, I got stuff I got to do. Uh, that laying in the bed ain't going to get me to my, my destiny. No, I have to get up early. I try to get up early. Why? Because I got I got I got stuff to do. I need all these hours to fulfill what I believe where I'm going. Now, if you, if you I need all my hours. See, I, I budgeted my time. I looked at my life, and I told myself one time, "You need more hours, boy." The reason, the one thing that's hindering you, you're not giving yourself enough time during the day. Woo! Are y'all listening? I have this this is the breakfast of champions. Look at people that's great and all they do. They, they, they're so disciplined. That's how you reach that pinnacle. Where they say you're great. They, 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 they're disciplined. Oh, hey man. Thank, thank you, Mama Jerry. Hey, Cause they are, ain't nobody else giving it to <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't know if they agree or not. Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> Amen. 
Go to Matthew 24, 13. So I told you we got to be faithful in our minds. Get a hold of your thoughts. Get a hold of your thoughts. Get a hold of your thoughts. That's what's anxiety. That's worry. Too many thoughts in your head. Get a hold of your Matthew thoughts. 24, Matthew 24, 13. 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Huh. This told us steadfastness and steadfastness, faithfulness has something to do with your salvation. Now, now we're not saved because of our works. We're saved because of the work that Christ did. But you got to you got to say Jesus Lord why are you taking your last breath? <gasps> Jesus you God. That he who endures, that's the Bible, to the end shall be saved. Because there's a lot of people that fell, fell off. That's what that song means. Yeah, I fell. That's what that means. That means, that means I messed up, but I never stopped believing in Jesus. Uh, I have messed up, I've been through attacks. But there's one thing I never shifted in, Jesus. That's one thing I never shifted in. Sometimes I let myself down. Sometimes I say, how you doing that? But, but one thing my heart never moved in, Jesus is my Lord. He was so much my Lord when I was falling, I still was praying. Y'all don't hear me. I, I was saying, Lord, you know this ain't right, Jesus. I said, I don't hide. I can't. Oh. Y'all listening to me. You can't shift in who your God is. Or was he your God? <laughs> Did you really have him? Is he rooted in you? Because when he rooted in you, I, I don't care what it is. I'm going to say something. I've got to say, I'm going to say, no, nah, Jesus, no. Nah. They, they could come to me and say, man, that G, no, nah, I'm not going to, no, nah, no. Nah. Now that's real. We jaws him, but that's real. <laughs> Are y'all listening? He who endures, you got to be steadfast in this thing, right? I'm gonna give a couple more. And we done. We at eight thirty. Give me, give me ten minutes. I'm done. Galatians six and nine. Galatians six and nine. Then give me. Galatians 6 9. And then I want to get 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. Mm -hmm. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Amen. He says, he said, now look at that. You got to be steadfast. You can't grow, you can't get tired doing good. You can't get tired doing good. What makes you get tired of doing good is when you it's something that you feel like you're not getting from it. That now you got to do a motive check. Why are you doing good? Right, right. See, 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 what makes you get tired? I ain't doing that no more. Is because somehow what you wanted, you're not getting. And normally, you want something from man. Right. You're really trying to please man. You want applause, and you're not getting it. Amen. So you say, I ain't going over there no more. They don't appreciate me. Right. Right. I ain't doing that no more. They don't appreciate me. But, so that's a motive check. Yeah. Right? Because whatever you do, you should do it unto God. And whether man appreciate, applaud or not, that doesn't matter because I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for him. And if you do it for him, you will be steadfast in doing it. And then you will reap your blessing but if you're doing it for man and a man don't give you what you want, you're going to move and miss your season. Right. Uh, he said, that's, that's what that's saying. If you, if you don't quit, you'll reap. That means if I quit, I missed it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that's why the enemy, right before you're about to get to that season of blessings, he tries to hit you with everything to make you 
with. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Uh, am I am I making sense, uh -huh, brothers and sisters? Amen. Because he knows the blessing yeah. is coming, he and he's trying to get you out of position, right. and he's trying to move you off your territory yeah. because the blessing is gonna come to the spot. Right. Oh. Right. That's right. Are y'all listening to me? It's it it's gonna come to the spot. But if you're not in the place, Mary has found the place. And I won't take it away from her. The place is at the feet of Jesus. Right. Are y'all listening to me? So he's right. going to try to move you from being at the feet of Jesus because the blessing is coming. And when it get there, you wasn't in. Yeah. Yeah. Adam! Where are you? You're not what we normally need at. Oh, who you been talking to, man? How you know you naked? Talking all that flesh talk. What you talking about, Adam? You know we don't talk like that in here. Ah, oh, who are you repeating? That makes sense. You got to stay in your spot. Hurting, abused, don't out of confusion. You got just don't move. Just stay right here. Even when certain stuff hit with all the cars, I couldn't move because I don't know what to do outside of this. It's dangerous to start trying to start stuff new in a war. And I told you when you're under pressure, you got to lean on what you've been taught already. In the heat of a game, the worst thing to do is to come on and design a new play. Oh, man, you should have had a play ready for this. You're talking about you didn't test a play for 4 and 25? <laughs> Don't you understand you might be down one day? Don't you understand you will be down one day in life? Yeah. Have you read some down scriptures? Are all the scriptures you read about blessing and money? No, one day, ain't go one day you're going to go through a hardship. Your heart is going to be broken. I don't know how time, what time or what type and all that, but one day your heart is, haven't you read the Bible? <laughs> one day your heart is going to be broken. You can't read every scripture about prosperity. You got to read some scriptures. How do you survive a storm? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going, I ain't in the storm now, but let me read just a couple just in case it come. I don't have to start figuring out what I'm going to do. I'm going to lean on what I know what to do. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? I can start trying to do stuff. At least I'm going to get lost in this wind that's blowing. I don't know that. That's what David said. No, I can't try that armor. That ain't. I'm fighting the biggest fight of my life. I can't go in this fight with your stuff, man. This is a big. We ain't playing. This ain't practice. That's a real live giant right there. I don't know that armor, but I know this slingshot, though. I've been faithful to this slingshot, and this slingshot has been faithful to me. It killed a lion for me. It killed a bear for me. Whatever you're faithful to will be faithful right back to you. It's proven to work. I can't go with stuff that ain't proven to work. Not in pressure. We could try stuff. We beat them 40 0, Jerry. We could try a new play. That's the die one. You pick one, I pick one. You can have fun then. But when the game is on the line, I only can use what I know works. When the game of life is on the line, only use what you know works. One of the reasons I have not quit Jesus, because one of the things that Jesus has proved to me, he works. I don't know if he works for you, but he's shown up work for me. <laughs> ah, I'm going to lean on this old gospel. All right. I'm going to lean on this old rugged cross that he died. That, that's, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> then y'all say he died? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay right there then. That's what you said. That's what you said. I, I, I can't start doing new theories and all that. No, 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 no. It's an old hey. car. <laughs> but this joker ride. <laughs> this engine is solid. It ain't the prettiest, but this engine is solid. Oh. Good God. I don't care how clean something look. I don't see. Watch out for new stuff all the time. Come on. Come 
Why y'all have all this new this and new that and new that? Because it hasn't been proven through the test of life. That's right. That's right. It ain't been tested. You don't really know if you're going to stand the test of life. Amen. Because it's new. It's pretty. But can it survive a storm? Or that pretty thing going to break down on you? God in the storm, that beautiful car, that engine popped. Blew up. <laughs> but that old, old tin can. Uh, I hope Bar Deacon Stall is watching that. That old tin can. It ain't the prettiest, but this thing, this engine's strong, baby. That's about us. Don't try to be so pretty on the outside. Get your engine strong on the inside. That's right. Are y'all listening to me? Because real value is how long you can last. Oh. We call them antiques. We call them collector yeah. items. Those are the only items that appreciate because right. they've been around so long. That's I feel right. God. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The more you stay around, the more your value will oh, go up. Yeah. The more you stay around, the more your value will right. go up. Right. It's not what you can do for one time. Can you do oh. it 20 times? Right. Can you do it 10 times? Yes. Everybody can do something great one time. Are y'all listening to me? The more I'm preaching, the better I'm getting. Are you listening to me? I was not preaching like this when I started. I wasn't giving the revel God wasn't giving me revelation like this when I started. But the older, the more I keep going, the more he pouring out. Are y'all listening to me? And he's not doing it. He's doing it because you're consistent. That's all. That's it. I told a brother the other day, he said, man, how do you know all this? And I, I said, man, it's 20 years of studying, bro. I said, you just started. I, I said, how long you been here doing this? Two years? Well, that's, that's, that, that's why I know and you don't. Uh, you, that's 20 years, Bible studies. That's 20 years of classes. 20 years of Sunday, only missed, three, only missed two or three Sundays. Wasn't a pastor either. There's 20 years of this, because I, I, I love this. This is good to me. And after a while, I don't even know if you just accumulate so much. Just... Amen? Hallelujah. I'm going to give y'all one more. We done. You got your hand up? Go ahead, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello. Oh, I wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't singing unto you. Don't matter if you like it or not. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's that was good. I ain't worshiping you. We're not. We're not here to please people. We're here to please God. Let God be exalted. Amen. I'm gonna give you two more, and I promise we gone, y'all. But I gotta. It says, "Uh, I want to give you this. I, I gotta give you this one. Did we talk about us? Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me uh, First Corinthians 15 and 8, and then my last one. Hold me to it. James 12 and 1. First Corinthians 15 8. Somebody read that quickly. Go ahead. Then last of all, he was seen by me also. No, -uh. therefore, my brother. You said First Corinthians fifteen and eight. Fifteen fifty-eight. Forgive me, sister. That's oh, fifty-eight. Fifty. That's my fault. Uh -oh. I did say eight. Please forgive me. Please, First Corinthians fifteen fifty-eight. Okay. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Be steadfast, unremovable, always abounding in God's work. I'm going to do this to the day I die. I'm going to preach the gospel, listen to me, to the day I die. I may not pastor, 
because that, that, would, that would do the church a disadvantage because you need pastors a part of the culture so they can lead right, right? I'm not going to grow 80 and still try to pass. I'm going to move out the way. Are you listening? And let somebody young that can that that can come with innovation something. Let y'all do it, right? But but this preaching thing, please. <laughs> this teaching thing, I'm gonna do this forever, cause the word don't change. No. Oh. I said I can teach this 80, 90, 100, cause it, it is what it is. I, it's gonna, I actually will get better at doing this. Pastorship is a little, it's different from preaching. Just cause you can preach don't mean you can pastor. Because it's, it's two different functionality. Preaching is a part of pastoral ship, but it's not that. It's not, it's not the main thing, part of it. Does that make sense? So I, I, at one point, I'm going to have to move out the way because my style will be outdated. Uh, see, can you be honest with yourself to know that one day you're not going to be the main thing? Are you humble enough to know that? That one day you're going to fade and he's going to say, Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. You know that, right? I, I just want to let you know, one day you're going to go out of style. Are y'all listening to me? And you're going to have to move for the next person that's in style to keep leading the people forward. Because if you stay in a position too long, you will start to actually lead the people backwards. So I'm going to move. I'm going to, I'm going to already position myself to move. I'm going to make sure I got a good 401k. Or whatever I need to retire. Uh, yeah. You got me? I'm going to make sure I raise up somebody young, to, to, you know, so that, you know, this is the one. Uh, see, yeah. you got to think like this. And then I'm going to move. But this work of preaching the gospel, I'm going to do it forever. I'm, I'm going to teach a class until I can't teach again. Are you listening to me? I'm going to always, you see, any work or task you take on for the Lord, you can't move in. You got to do this all, be unremovable, always, in season, out of season. Don't take on a work that you're not going to commit to. You're doing a disadvantage to the people and everybody else. If you don't, if whatever you feel like doing, if you don't feel like putting five to ten years in it, don't do it. I'm going to say that again. Whatever you're committing to, if you're not, if you haven't made up your mind, I'm going to at least give ten years to this thing, don't do it. Are y'all listening to me? Because you're not going to see the fruit the first, the first year. You're not going to see the fruit the second year. And then you may not see the fruit the third year. You may not see the fruit. This church has been going now for 13 years. And I'm just now really starting to see the fruit of it. For the first seven or eight years, I didn't see no fruit. Because he wasn't building the people, he was building me. I seen the fruit in me, but I, ah. you don't get fruit overnight. You're not going to see it. You got you to gotta say, I'm, I'm going to do this 10 years strong. First. First, make up in your mind. Or don't do it. You can't retire from a company you only work for two years for. Uh, come on.
be a physician. I know I'm gonna be whatever I want to be. I don't doubt that. Because the only reason I, but, but but this is the problem. But I said, but Lord, I know you called me to this. And the only reason I really have to understand the mind I have, because I'm operating in your obedience. So one of my fears was if I stopped doing what I knew God was calling me to do and went and tried to be a lawyer or a doctor or something like that, God would take my wisdom away from me. Woo, are y'all listening to me? Because really, I'm, I'm only as wise as I am because I'm being obedient to what he taught me to do. And if, and if I let the devil discourage me of doing what he called me to do, how do I know I'm going to keep my mind? Oh. Oh. Are, are, are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? So that's, but, but and really, I wanted to quit because I felt like it wasn't giving me what I wanted and pleasing what I wanted. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? Amen. But I still had to show up anyway. It was one day I wanted to drive totally in the opposite direction. I had to show up anyway. Didn't want to. No, didn't want to. Didn't want to. Didn't want to. Just being honest. No. Want to do something else. And this ain't paying me. Oh. And my family is struggling. But me saying I got a calling on my life. Are y'all listening to me? But Lord, one thing I know, you called me to do this. I can't deny that. Everything I prayed for concerning this, you gave it to me. Everything I prayed for concerning this, you gave it to me. God wants to see. That's why, have you noticed before he takes you to the promised land, he takes you to the wilderness? Before Jesus started his ministry, he went into the wilderness. Don't you notice, don't you see that, how he does that? You see, do you see like his method? That's why we have a, that's why we have a church called the Methodists, because they, because they understand God does work in methods. Sometime before God takes you to a place that's overflowing, he's going to take you to a trial to see, will you be faithful? Because if you quit here, I'm not going to let you get there. What puts you into this land of, of flowing with milk and honey is that when you don't know where your food going to come from, we don't know where your water going to come from, you will not say, I'm going back to Egypt, but you're going to say, oh, are y'all listening to me? You're going to say, no, nah, well, God, you're with me. You brought me out. I got to march on. I got to go on. I, I, I don't know. If, uh, I know you haven't brought me out here to let me die. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I'm seeing what you're doing, but it don't look like you're moving fast enough, so I got to hold on. Uh, he, that's how he keeps the faith out. How do you keep, that's his boundary from keeping the faith out of the promise is that he puts us through trial, tests, to see will you say Lord Jesus anyhow. And if you can say Lord Jesus, hallelujah, anyhow, you will come into a promise. But if you will let life, if you let life take and snatch your hallelujah, if you let the devil come and snatch that seed of that word in you, you will not reap a harvest. Because every time you get a word, Every time you get a promise, every time you get a vision, the adversary is going to come and try to take it away from you. And the only thing that makes you get your promise is how bad will you hold on to that thing? Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. We're going to fight all night long. Every real believer walks with a limp. Ah, let me stop. Every real believer, we walk with a limp in the spirit. Amen. Because we didn't get this blessing easy. This blessing came with a fight. This blessing came with some bruises. This blessing came with some battle testing. My limp. Ah, uh, Jacob walked with a limp. He was the prince, but he had a limp. I had to fight. For this thing. And when you fight hard, don't let the devil come and take it from you. You start saying, no, you not. No, you not. I fought a harder devil than you. 
God, God, don't give it easy. Thank you, Lord, that you don't give it easy. At least I wouldn't have the strength I got. You get strong through the trials. You get courage through the trials. You stand up through the After a while, you fight so much. You're like, man, I'm about five. See, Joshua was such a fighter that Joshua ran up on everybody. Joshua was such a fighter, he ran up on the ankle. Who side you are? That's how, that's how much of a fighter he was. But you only get that through the trials. Can you be steadfast? Can you be unremovable? Can you preach, sing, pray, prophesy, real prophets and prophesy? See, just because they're prophets don't mean they don't go through hell. Oh. But if you really got it, like you got it, you can be going through hell and don't nobody even know it. You got it so much, you can be discouraged and encouraging people at the same. That's how much you got it. I got it so much that when I walked in discouraged, this was just my overflow. You walked out shouting for my overflow. Because I just got it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You got to be faithful. Stand to your feet. You got to be faithful. You got to be faithful, steadfast, unremovable, always. Somebody say always. 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 I'm going to always praise always. the Lord. I'm going to always bless the Lord. I'm going to always, amen, I'm going to always do it. Even when it feels like he ain't working, even if I'm crying, sitting in the back, I'm going to always, always do this. I'm always, I will bless the Lord at all times. That's my character. I'm not leaving my territory. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify you. We love you. We honor you. Thank you for being faithful. Mm. Thank you for being faithful. Lord, we got stuff we don't even deserve. Lord, I got stuff I didn't don't de even deserve. Didn't even reach my own standard. I wouldn't even bless me. Yes! Yes! But you did it anyway. You did it anyway. You did it anyway. You did it anyway. I thank you. Teach us how to be faithful like you. Teach us how to not to change. Teach us how to be the same. Bless us with faithfulness. Bless us with faithfulness. I pray nobody under the sound of my voice will lose their faith. You said, when the Son of Man returns, I'm not looking for titles. I'm not looking for the biggest church. I'm looking for who still has faith. That means all hell is going to break loose, Lord. Lord, let us keep our faith in the name of Jesus. Let us say that you are Lord and let us believe it. When we're taking our final breath on this side, Pastor, in the mighty name of Jesus. And put us to a work that we're going to be faithful to. Let's not sign up for stuff, Lord, and don't be faithful to it, Lord. For whatever we sign up for, let us do it in season and out of season. Let us be committed, consistent people. Committed, consistent people people. Let us have a committed, consistent character in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us travel and mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the rest of my life, I will serve the Lord. Oh, God. 
Hallelujah. Just out for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let us be faithful to one another. Let us be faithful to one another. Let us be faithful to one another. Let our reputation be that church is a faithful church. That those people are faithful people. We'll bless you. We'll honor you. We'll praise you. Baptize us in the Holy Ghost. Change us. Change our nature. Change our nature. Let us not be cheaters. Let us be faithful. We give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus. Let us not be an adulterous generation. But let us be faithful. In Jesus' name. Amen. I have applause. And if you mean this, if you mean this, if you don't mean it, don't say it. But if you mean this, tell the master, I ain't going nowhere. What you got?